<laughs> What's poppin' T-Subs and T-Squads? So, child, y'all already know what we had to talk about. We had to gag these basketball wives. Actually, we had to gag these basketball wives, ex-wives, girlfriends, baby mamas. Um, and yeah, all right, because there's only one basketball wife, and that's Jackie. Um, and there's no shade to nobody else around there. I'm just calling it like it is. And you know what I'm saying? But we had to gag them, honey. This is season 10, episode two. Whatever the hell the name of the episode is, child, that's for y'all to figure out. Not me, girl. So we just go on ahead. We're on with this thing. So the episode continues where I left off at, and that was the argument between Brandy and LaQuiqui. And Brandon asking, you know, did she know that Wolf died? And, you know, that's when LaQuiqui had enough. And, you know, that's when Ghetto Fat Compton got up and she walked out. All right. So uh, when asked, does LaQuiqui miss Brandy? She said, no, absolutely not. And I mean, listen, after three years of not seeing a person, I'm not too shocked and surprised at that. And, and I, I don't see why anybody else would be either. I mean, yes, it's sad. It's unfortunate. You know, you don't want to see that happen because at one at one point, both of these ladies were friends. Or were they? Because Laquiqui, ghetto fat, projected Compton ass Laquisha was so able and willing and ready to forfeit her friendship to be chilling up amongst um the likes of Vershandia pig face ass and um and, and Eveline with all that horation that she had going on. And around that time, Miss Tam Bam. But y'all know I love my Tammy. So I'm leaving. I love my Tammy Romaine Lettuce. And we're just leaving her out of this. But y'all know the point that I'm making. But it is what it is. Um, I will say this, though, Brandy. A lot of people are saying that you wore their nerve out with this situation between her and her dad. Like I said before, and I'm going to say it again. I know I give LaQuiqui a lot, and all of it is well-deserved with her ghetto fire projected Compton ass. However, I, that I, I, for me, I still don't believe that, you know, she knew, you know, uh, about your dad's death. I get why you feel like she would know, but cause even though y'all got mutual friends, even if that is the case, they know that y'all don't fool with each other. So is it so far-fetched for me to believe or think that, you know what I'm saying, even though y'all do have friends together or whatever the case may be, but they did not tell her? Possible. Now, do I necessarily think that happened with her? Y'all know what? We finna move on. Um, Because I don't want to keep rehashing that. But it's funny that so many people are on 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 op- a lot of people that ain't fuck Laquiqui is on her side when it comes to this brandy. I'm just saying. Moving on though, so Brooke is married and she finna celebrate her five years and or whatnot with her husband. And um, Brandy meets her down to the piercing shop to get her nipples pierced. I mean, I guess it was a cute scene, but um. I mean, yeah, it, you know, it was a cute scene, um, but it really won't much. You know, she just got her nipples pierced and then they started talking about LaQuiqui and all of that stuff that she had going on around there. Like this whole thing became whenever it was Brandy and LaQuiqui with the other people, it became talking about them. That's kind of what this episode was. Um, but we're going to move on. So Angel and Rockstar um, is having a lunch date with Duffy Duck. And um, uh, Lord, I'm not, I'm not going to call that man that. Her husband. Um, <laughs> that, that I'm not going to call that man that. Her husband, child. Um, so the whole thing was awkward, like from the word go. And it wasn't awkward from Duffy Duck and um, that dude she with. It was awkward from Angel, a corny ass Negro that she with. Like, like he, I, 
listen. Angel, you didn't know Rockstar like that. Okay? And I felt like you got hot in the ass for a nigga dick. Like, like, like most of y'all do. No shade. No shade. But you got thirsty for a nigga dick like most of y'all do. And now it's really hitting you. But now it's too late. Because now you're in a predicament where you got to deal with this corny ass nigga for the rest of your life. I understand your pain, but I wish you would have gotten this before you decided to lay down and have coitus with this butt nigga and produce this child. I'm just saying. Like, I, I don't, I, I, like, you acting like he be whipping your ass around there. That's really what you be acting like. And I know good damn well you're not allowing that corny ass nigga to fuck you up around there. Bitch, please. I know you the fuck line. I, I'm moving on from that. 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 So Duffy Duck is practicing her DJing and or whatnot. And that's when that um boy that she with um and her beautiful little daughter show up. So she wants to go back to being a DJ because DJing is what she was, DJing is what made her and all the rest of that stuff. And I'm not mad at her for wanting to do that. And she wants to go on tour with French Montana. She has the opportunity to do so. French wants her to do that. That makes money. That makes her look good. That boosts up her brand. So why wouldn't she not do it? I'm on that side. Um, but that boy, she would want her to be home. Why? Why? Bitch, you ain't home. So why she got to be home? Like, I hate that. Like, I just feel like it's so messed up that a woman is supposed to just say, oh, okay, I'm going to quit what I've been doing before I even knew who the fuck you was. I'm going to just stop all that and just stay here with the kid. Nah, bitch, how about you do that? And I go work. If you could go out and work, why can't I go out and work? It can be done. It can happen. She's sitting at home to do what? To do what? Like, I just feel like she can still do what it is that she's doing and still be an effective mom. The same way you can still do what you're doing and you can still be an effective dad. Because to be honest with you, I ain't never heard of your ass <laughs> until you got with Duffy. And we ain't know who the fuck Duffy was until she got on Basketball Wives and nearly got her ass tossed over the railing by Tam. <laughs> And then we got her ass tossed over the railing, <laughs> over the railing by Tammy Romaine Lettuce. Let's be clear. Like I can't stand when dudes do that shit. Like you just dropping all this over, oh, yo. Oh, well, we talked about this. Nah, bitch, you talked about it. I was just listening. But we didn't talk about nothing. Moving on, because Duffy, you'll be a fool to stop doing what you're doing for him. You'll be a fool and a half. You'll be a fool and a half. Don't do that, Duffy. Do not put yourself in a predicament to where you're left dependent on his ass. Because God forbid the day he decides he don't want to be with you no more, then you let stuck, you know, trying to penny pinch off him. Nah, continue doing what you're doing. If he don't like it, fuck him. Moving on. So Laquiqui and Zell hang out. Um Moving on. So Brooke British, Duffy Duck, and Brandy hang out down to the spot. Um, what I don't touch on, I touch on tomorrow in the last gag at 11 o'clock on the second channel, I guess. Um, so Brandy says that she really loves Luquiqui, but she's just gonna let her be. Um I know that y'all still care about each other because if y'all didn't, there wouldn't be this heavy of emotions amongst the both of y'all. It's obvious that the both of y'all miss each other. And it's obvious that the both of y'all really love each other. But the both, listen, this is a lot like melodrama and destiny on LAMH. All right. Neither one of you all really want to admit fault in what happened between the both of y'all. Now, I feel like Laquiqui is more at fault at what happened between the both of y'all. 
And I think that's the reason why all of this is going on. Because she don't want to admit that she completely forfeited who the fuck she was as a person and as a woman and downgrade herself just so that she could be amongst uh, the popular click group. That's honestly what I think about this. And it's like, Brandy, at this point, she's been gone all this time. Why try to change it now simply because y'all are on the show? That's, 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 sometimes you outgrow your friends. Sometimes you can really feel like this, this is my bitch. This is my good Judy. And we're going to be together forever. Things change. People change. Dynamics change. Times change. And you know what? That's okay. It's okay. You've now dealt without her in your life for three years and you made it just fine. Yeah, you went through bumps in, in, in the road. We all do. But you still here. You made it without it. So I, I, I don't know. But I listen, either you're going to work it out or you're not. Obviously, you're not and you ain't and you didn't because I've been getting all the tea since y'all was still doing what y'all was doing. But I don't know, child. We're going to move on. Um, So Angel Brinks go down to her shop. And then when I look at her shop and she told me the people that she styled for, I say, well, you know what? There's a market for everything. We gonna move on because Angel is real sweet. I don't want to get in too much. So Duffy Duck and British meet up lunch, and then they talk about the friendship between Brandy and um, Ghetto Fast uh, Project at Compton. And Duffy feels like if they become friends again, all of the new connections that Brandy made, she not gonna fool with it no more. Ooh, excuse me. Um, I understand what Duffy is saying. But I feel like Duffy is more afraid of the fact of her falling out or whatever because of Duffy and her and Duffy still being cool and being whatever. Because remember, much like Duffy said on her first season here, uh, Malele didn't like her ass at all. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's the only reason why Duffy says that. But you know what? That's Duffy's experience of Laquiqui. That's how Laquiqui treated her ass when she came up there. She put her in, in the predicament of it's either my friendship with you or her. That's what it was because that's how it made her feel. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I, but I will say this. I'm getting, listen. This is the second episode. From this point on, I don't want to hear no more sad conversations about Brandy and Ghetto Fab Project. I don't want to hear no more sad conversations about them. Like, now was the time. Like, the time that y'all spent doing that could have been time spent talking about other things that y'all got going on with y'all selves and y'all life and y'all family and y'all business and such and such and such. Like, y'all using that time to talk about another bitch is, is, is a little late to me. I'm just going to be honest. Moving on. Um, so we get down to Brooke's birthday dinner. Brooke, I loved her dress. Her dress was absolutely everything. Absolutely lived for. Um, her man. Uh, yeah. Um, this is what I'm going to say. Her man reminds me a soup cooler lips man on LAMH. That that's that's what that's what her man remind me of. Um, yeah, and take it as such. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So Laquique don't show up to dinner. And Brandy tries to take up for Ghetto Fire Project Laquiqui, and she says that she might come to the after party. Duffy starts um, talks Tar saying, you know, stand up for your bestie. You better stand up for your bestie. You better take up for your bestie, blah, 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 blah. And Brandy gets irritated. Listen, I understand it from both sides, and we'll get to it when we get there. So Rockstar calls Angel, and she leaves early. This is why I asked to see whooping your ass around the house, Angel. If he is, blink twice, because I'll send the homies around there. Like, he a bitch-ass nigga. Like, trust me. Ain't no real nigga running around here scared of no damn Rockstar. Like, so because he called you, you got up and left? Why? 
You already said that y'all was arguing. Y'all won't see him out of eye. Like that was the time for you to not worry about him. And if you saying he been gone or doing this or doing that, why is you running and leaving and jumping at his every back and call? I don't like that. Like Rockstar ain't that type of nigga. He ain't got no pull like that. He ain't that nigga like that. So for you to be sitting up here jumping up and leaving at his every back and call, Angel Brinks, girl, y'all get your life in order. Moving on. Because Miss Girl, <laughs> you tried it. Anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, Brandy talks to Duffy Duck alone, and she basically tells her, listen, I'm going to need for you to chill with the bestie thing. But I understood what Duffy was saying. I did. It's like on one token, when y'all are supposed to talk about it and get over it, y'all don't. Y'all get to arguing again. But you get sensitive and you get touchy and then you take up for it. So it is like, which one is it? Either y'all miss each other or y'all don't. Either y'all like each other or y'all don't. Either y'all want to work it out or y'all don't. It's like you got irritated at Duffy, but you are the one confusing everybody. Well, you the one confusing everybody because Malay, Malay straight up says she don't miss you. She don't miss you. Her life was going just fine without you in it. Now, why is you coming around here disturbing her peace amongst her friends and, and amongst her circle, etc., etc., etc.? That's how Laquiqui ghetto fat Compton ass feel. Why you setting up around here trying to take up for her at a damn dinner that she did not come to, mainly because your ass was going to be there. I felt like if you weren't there, Malaysia would have had her ass in that chair. Moving on. Um... So after the birthday dinner, a jack attack calls Laquiqui, and she talks about how she left for Atlanta to go and get her kids. And then I guess her kids going to come back up there with her, and they're going to stay in her two-pair bedroom apartment. Laquiqui, again, Laquiqui. Uh, yeah. So anyway, um, Duffy Duck is at home, um, and she with her friend who's a uh, up and coming music artist, I assume, because I ain't never seen or heard of a damn like named Zoe, but she cute though. She cute though. She cute though. Um, you know, and you know, she calls Frenchie, and Frenchie tells her straight up, um, you know, if you don't take this, it'll hard. It'll be hard for you to get back. Basically is what he said. Either take it or leave it. Because I, I I believe in you and I see what it is you're doing. And you will be a damn fool to allow somebody else stop your bag and stop your career that you built from the ground damn up. So the choice is up to you. Basically is what he was saying in such a nice way. The choice is up to you. Same way I got wanted to get you to do it. It's plenty of others that would be more than willing to take your spot. And listen, don't get me wrong. From a mothering standpoint, I get it. It would be one thing if Duffy says, you know what? As great of an opportunity as this is, I love my daughter. My daughter is still young. And I, I, I want to be with my daughter. That's one thing because it would be her decision and hers alone. I feel like if she decided to quit, it wouldn't be because of her. It would be because of that damn boy she did. And that's the problem that I got. I don't like how he's still trying to force her to quit her damn job. But whatever. You can do what you want, child. That ain't none of my business. Um, so Duffy Duck goes to see Angel to talk about what they got going on. And she tells him what she got going on with Iman. And then she tells her what she got going on with that corny ass Negro rock star and how she just doesn't feel like he's really the one for her and all of the rest of this stuff. And my thing is, Angel, you should have thought about that shit before you decided to go out here and get pregnant by him. Why do y'all women do that? Y'all women always sleep with a motherfucker that y'all wind up don't like and hating and all the rest of that stuff. You sleep with him and then let him pop a baby in you. Then that's when you realize you don't like him and he ain't the one for you and you don't want to be with him no more. Well, uh, listen, at that time, it don't even matter no more 
because now you got to deal with them for the rest of your damn life. It goes beyond until your kid turns 18, people, just to let y'all know. You parents forever. But anyway, that's it. That's all I got. I ain't got no more to give y'all. Tonight's episode, it won't be bad. It won't be bad. Um, it was I. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was I. Right. Y'all drop down in the comments. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about tonight's episode. Remember, tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock, the less gag for Basketball Wise will be on the second channel. Definitely make sure that y'all go there now. Click on the link. Um, set your reminders so that y'all can remember to be there because I'm on the show. Y'all gonna have a lot to say, as y'all always do, and that'll be y'all time to do so. So with that having been said, um, I love you guys. I love on you guys. Y'all be good. Y'all be safe. Y'all be blessed. And until tomorrow morning, I will holler at y'all soon. Bye.